Hi, I'm Rigger, this is You Alright, and today I want to discuss Ruby's not quite Joffrey. And more importantly, where we go from here. Before that though, if you like the video, please like it, share it if you think others would like it too, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and of course subscribe if you want to see more. You'll see all sorts of weird stuff on my channel, like this for real 10 hour video of me doing a reaction commentary to every single episode of the first season of Attack on Titan. All 25. Yes, really. So if you feel like watching season 1, you can watch the whole thing with me. Yeah, I did that. And there'll be more to come. But now, let's discuss Prince Schnee. Willy has somewhat captured the discussion for quite a few Ruby fans. From the background sidekick of a certain snake with a mustache, to the pitied victim at the hands of said snake. He certainly has sparked discussion, and during the run of current events, we've seen what could pass for his face turn. It's very possible for the show to just leave it at calling Klein and this nice hug, and put him out of our minds and move on. To say we don't have time is an understatement, we clearly have a lot to be doing, and not a lot of time to do it. However, there are some things I'd really like to see that perhaps we can fit into this plot to round out that face turn, and possibly do something important for later. So before I go into the details of exactly what I'd like to see, we'll set up that later I was talking about. I'm not the only one who has said it. Like some of my peers, I have come to the conclusion that chances are, in our post-Ruby, perhaps in the last episode of the series, our epilogue, where we get the Where Are They Now segment that we'd all like to see. For reference, check for Metal Alchemist Brotherhood's last episode for a lesson on how to do it, and do it pretty perfectly. But the point is, we are assuming that Whitley will in fact take control of the Schnee Dust Company. That he will take his father's place at the top, but his experiences through the story will lead him to learn the lessons of compassion and value for life. The value of the common man, to walk in his grandfather's footsteps and not Jacques. It's actually a pretty logical conclusion. Willow deserves a nice break, Jacques is not getting the company back, Winter wouldn't ever want to run it, and part of Weiss's journey has been to move past that idea that she started with that she will run it. Now yeah, there's a very good chance that Atlas succumbs to gravity this season, but I think it's pretty unlikely Whitley goes down with the ship, so to speak, and the world will continue after our story. Before you ask, no, I don't think the eventual end will be the gods returning, giving us all magic, therefore there's no need for dust. Even if that were the case, all the technology runs on it, so we'd still probably need it. And even if that does happen, the hows and whys of that are for a discussion another day. The point is that I'm operating under the idea that it will be Whitley. It makes too much sense. Even if you're not under that umbrella of thought, you have to admit we'd like to see him become a better person anyway. And it seems unlikely he's gonna die, for many reasons. So, if we operate under the idea that we just don't want him to die, also want him to grow, and we look at the story, we come to the conclusion that he has to get off Atlas. It brings up something else that goes with this, which is the idea of survivors. See, when Atlas falls, which we're all pretty sure it's going to, there's a few options on how we do this. There's the one that probably won't happen that's pretty stupid, which is that the girls somehow find a way to save it, and it floats again, and we move on, that doesn't make sense, we need the staff, you know. Probably not gonna happen, so it's probably gonna fall. Then the other one is that they shove it off course somehow. We push Atlas somehow, and it doesn't land on everybody. It lands off to the side. Again, that's pretty illogical, even if you call Penny pushing Amity foreshadowing. She can't push Atlas. There is the nuclear option, which is it lands on the crater and everyone dies. Or there is the option that they're somewhat more likely to go with, which is people flee out onto the ice and not everyone dies. Still bad, not as bad as it could be. It retains the loss of life to make this a tragedy, but it's not an extinction level event for Atlas killing everybody. And you know, this would put the Happy Huntresses to good use, and Robin, and those sort of things. So it's quite a logical eventuality that we'll probably get something like that. But that brings up the question of survivors and how we handle them. In fact, it leaves the question of how do the survivors survive out on the ice? Not everyone has aura, and that only lasts so long, and there's Grimm around, and nowhere to go. It's one of those little mysteries, I'm not sure exactly how they'll handle it, but they don't seem to have mass transportation now. All I can figure is that a few of those big capital ships up there survive, and we load the survivors on there as much as we can, just squash them in, and fly somewhere safer. Because it goes without saying that Salem's goal isn't to kill all these people. She may not care if they die, but actively putting time and effort into killing them is pointless. She wants the staff. 
and she will take her Grimm with her for the most part when she leaves to continue her attack. So I don't think the people out on the ice will be bombarded by an army of Grimm, but there will surely be stragglers around and there's all the other things to still deal with, survival at all. At this point, you might just say I'm rambling and what has this got to do with Whitley? Well, if Whitley is to grow, there's a necessary step that needs to happen, or that really should happen. Currently, Whitley and Willow are in Shnei Manor. We need to get them out of there. I know it's a popular theory that Willow is going to die. I see so many people, and not just people in comments, but other creators saying that they envision or see Willow dying. Perhaps getting a great moment defending her son, but go down. But I wholeheartedly disagree that this is the path we should take. And yes, I want her to have a great moment saving her son. You can see my Shni Mana video for evidence of that. But I don't think she should die. And the reason I don't want her to die is I think she can be a lot more useful in our story than that. Storytelling wise, why do we want her to die? Well, she's very absent from events. Perhaps we want to give her something to do, something cool, and then get rid of her because she feels kind of useless. And it'll hurt people like Weiss and Winter. Plus it'll add to our body count, so the Fall of Atlas feels bigger because it's someone we know, not just the overall crowd. Also, I get the idea that a lot of people think think that her doing something like this big savior moment of Whitley will act as redemption for her character, because some people see her as a bad parent or failing to protect her kids from Jacques. Personally, I find that a very harsh assessment of a very broken character, but if you feel that way, that's on you. But I really think we can use her better than squashing her as part of a falling rock, or more likely in the jaws of one hound. Because the point of this video is that I have come around to realize for a little while that for this to work and to get the most out of this, what we really need is for Whitley to go to Mantle. Now, from where we are right now, we have a couple of options for our out. May wants to go to Mantle. There's at least one ship they came in and potentially more because there may be a Schnee ship there as well. Try saying Schnee ship. Schnee ship. I actually got that on my first try. Anyway, moving on. The point is, you would probably approach that and say, well, this is fine, because Willow can die. And then May feels bad about her judgment of Whitley, perhaps, in light of his actions and losing a parent, and she rescues him back to Mantle. We could go that route, but I still think Willow should live here. But yes, do send both Whitley and Willow down to Mantle with May. She's going anyway, and the whale attacking your city is a good enough motivation to leave, as the teams have already discussed. The focus is here in Atlas, so leaving is a decent plan. Oh, and I didn't forget about Klein either, he can come too. Rather than break Weiss by making her lose her mom, let's instead have her be a good huntress and insist that her family leave and go to Mantle. And you have this center around an attack on Shnee Manor that we know is going to happen. Either she says, go and they refuse and then the attack happens and then they listen to her after or the attack happens and then she says go and they just go either way doesn't matter but the point is you have Whitley witness this witness a fight seeing Weiss Ruby and the others defend him from attacks and his family it'll be a response to Whitley's very own statements he asked what a single huntsman can do that an army cannot but this is where we show him Weiss and May in particular he should really see his sister in a new light here. He clearly cares for her to some degree, it's just buried under all of his loathing and conditioning. A big step we can take here is to really show him both love and care by Weiss and his mother putting their lives on the line for him and being successful at it. This can be where Willow has a great moment doing something that he had never seen before, but also more importantly, he sees Weiss fighting for his life. Then they flee down to Mantle with May. This whole incident does more than just help Whitley's relationship with his family. It sets him on a path to really change as a person. Importantly, we're not motivating this with loss. We're not killing his mom, so he pledges to be a better person in her memory. That's the wrong kind of growth here. That's a debt. That's guilt and shame, and that doesn't make him the man that's best to head such a powerful company. Sure, you can say to live better for someone else who's gone is somewhat noble, but to actually have him come to improve himself with circumstance, not just in debt to someone, would be another thing entirely, and that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Now, before I move on, there's a bit of an, um, elephant in the room, I guess, here kinda. I don't like that I have to cover this because it gets very muddy, but I think if we handle this correctly, we could do some important things. Things. We need to talk about May. So I hope it's been very clear for me that I defer to those better in the know with May's personal struggles. But I do still weigh in on her as a character in this story. 
I hope it's clear how much respect I have for these issues and how much I care and I try to make this a channel where everyone is welcome and that I do not want to needlessly hurt anybody because that's obviously never the intention. However, I think I need to address something about what happened with May and her talks about what happened with her family and how she related to the others. I've heard it's basically the consensus for a lot of people that her family were transphobic and it was a heavy component in her leaving. Now she doesn't say that, she says Mantle needed her and she was disowned because of it, and that her transition either occurred at the same time or just after with how she worded it. I've seen a lot of that reading between the lines says they were transphobic. Maybe they were, and maybe they're not. I'm not going to die on that hill, because I don't know. Personally, I thought it was more of a status thing, that they were unwilling to support May's choice to help the poor people in Mantle and lower the status of her family overall. Essentially, lowering the value of their family name with what she was doing, and that she would have been disowned whether she was trans or not because of those actions. The reason I took it that way actually has nothing to do with the trans element, I actually thought it played better into the conversation with Weiss as a story element. It compares both of them coming from status and who they are now, including how Jacques used and treated Weiss and how he still talks about Winter as if she was stolen away from the family. It weakens the family name. And that May going to help down in Mantle would do the same thing. It, you know, puts them on a parallel. It was just more thematic to the overall show and those characters for me. But I know you're all wondering why I'm stepping on this landmine, because I don't want to upset anyone, but I can't help but see a little opportunity here that I've seen a lot of people write off over this transphobia interpretation. Basically, it's the idea that May can't at all be wrong here. People react to talks about her comments about leaving Mantle and being dismissive of Atlas as being valid because there was elements of transphobia. However, I can't totally agree. Not only is it lumping everyone in Atlas together, which is never a great idea to lump everyone together for anything, but it also skins over something really important to the portrayal of heroes that we're trying to go for, which is that you should be willing to help everyone. Being transphobic is of course horrible, but it should be a huntress's job to save you from death. That's not defending your viewpoint, but it's upholding their ideals of being a savior, of being a force for good. The reason I'm throwing myself on this grenade is that I think we could be a chance for some real mature statements here. May's perspective is valid given her experiences, but that doesn't mean she or anyone else is perfect. If we do this Whitley story properly, it could be the chance for some growth for May as well. A more, as I said, mature standpoint, not just that May, because of her circumstances and what she's gone through, is always right with what she says and her interpretation. That we all can grow, and that despite May's personal circumstances and how important that is to talk about, it doesn't mean that simply every interpretation she has of what people should do is correct. Believe me when I say the point of what I'm trying to say is not that we should just out and out forgive transphobic people with a blanket. Not at all. But we also just shouldn't lump in all of Atlas with those that wronged her, be it transphobia or otherwise. Because her immediate assumption about people like Whitley, which we can all see, it, it seems valid, and some of us had those opinions ourselves on the surface, can be proven wrong. It plays into May's own story, that she came from Atlas, but also isn't like those people she's talking about. That Weiss also came from Atlas, and surely May would have put her alongside her father and Whitley in her assessment much earlier in the show. But we know that's not the case anymore, that they grew and changed. That Atlas, while having some major issues, can produce great people that are willing to help others. She herself is one of them, and we take May on this little journey with Whitley, as we evolve him into being a good person as well, and May's perspective on him can change. Perhaps rethinking her willingness to just lump all of Atlas together with those that wronged her. Also, while I'm on this, yes it makes more sense that May prioritizes going to Mantle anyway, given it has less defense and her team is there, etc. All of that does weigh in, but we are allowing her to go there. She is going there, the reasoning is upheld. But my point is you can do character growth still, that you can refine a perspective. And if I'm honest, I would actually like to at least headcanon that perhaps she goes away to recovering a relationship with perhaps her brother, who we as an audience don't like and we assume goes along with his family, but he could be just like Whitley. And if we can get Whitley to change, maybe in the future, he will change. 
and you could hope that May perhaps has a better relationship with some of her family. Despite the negative impressions we have of her family, it would be nice if some of that was resolved for her. If she got some resolution in that part of her life, not just anger and resentment. I know that was perhaps not the most comfortable section of a side note to dive into, but I hope that what I was saying was clear, because I do really think we can do something here. But the overall point of the story is that Whitley, Winter, and Klein go with May down to Mantle. This, of course, is a culture shock to Whitley. He's among the poor people in the dirty mine, faunus everywhere, and he's not special here. He might even be looked at with some side glances. He's going to be resistant and have his defenses up at first. Here is where we do our growing. We don't have all the time in the world to spend on this subplot, so we need a way to tie it to other plots so we can see it happening while we do other things. Whitley's first hurdle is the people. Of course, we can do the easy thing of like a little rough looking faunus kid gives him some hot food. Something like that, right? Very easy. We should see he hates being here. A big sign of people that have grown up in comfort is discomfort and their ease of discomfort. A lot of people commented on this when uh, Weiss was cold out in the snow. Shouldn't you be used to it? But no, she wouldn't. She lived in comfort. She didn't have to be cold. Same thing for Whitley here. He is colder than everyone else. He hates it. But then we can do some other little images and some nice little callbacks, actually. The big one that comes to mind is you actually have Willow give a blanket to her son. And it is a callback to Blake putting a blanket around Weiss. But the circumstances, of course, here are changed. Have him pissed off looking, and when the blanket comes around his shoulders, he relaxes and is shocked, and he's more shocked to see it's Willow. And we see that leaves her without a blanket. She's willing to sacrifice for her son. We can also do some visual storytelling with Willow. Perhaps show her getting a bit strung out and sickly because she might be start going through those mean withdrawals. But here's where I said more growth. For everyone saying Willow needs redemption, we can do that in a bigger way here than death. We have her bond with her son. Become the mother she wasn't before. Without jocks and the trappings of money and alcohol, you can have them really bond here. It could be really, really sweet. In fact, I would love to see at some point Willow teaching Whitley how to use a semblance. I know he probably hasn't unlocked his aura yet and we assume that I don't think he'd have time to do it now, but she should still show him. I wouldn't actually show him using it yet. I'd have him sitting there with his mother as she brings up a glyph and is clearly explaining to him how it works and perhaps show him imitating her pose. Again, almost a little callback like when we had Winter showing Weiss in Volume 3. This means that Willow didn't just get her cool moment to use a glyph in a fight, not just defending her son, but her son noticing and taking an interest in this thing. And because their semblance is hereditary, it's something they can share and talk about. It's literally a visual lesson we can show her giving her son. It puts her character to good use. But this also does something else. It ties into something new for Whitley. It's the reason we're showing some of this and what we showed earlier is that Whitley now has an appreciation for Huntsman. Now that he's been actively saved by his family being Huntsman, it's something he can appreciate. It's something he sees the value in. So now we get something really important. Have Whitley helping. He's a healthy young boy, but he doesn't report to May like you think he'd do. Even better, it's Fiona. Fiona is running things, but this means that Whitley is taking directions from her. There's absolutely no bigger symbol possible of the Schnees changing than to be standing in the crater with all the mine shafts and Schnee processing plants around and have Whitley taking orders from Fiona, a Faunus and a Huntsman. You might say it's a stretch for him to do that, but I actually think you're wrong. As you can see with this hug moment, it's something I praised very heavily in the episode of you is that oftentimes it doesn't take much. You can watch Whitley's shell crack in real time with just a sigh and it's quite beautiful. It's something very true that oftentimes even these hard exteriors and these deeply learned behaviors for survival can be challenged with even the smallest bit of positivity. Having his sister hug him, his mother and sister and maid defend him, his mother sacrifice 
sacrifice for him while at the mines to her own comfort, and seeing warmth from people like other faunas in the crater can do a lot to crack his shell. But we can tip the scales even more with Klein. See, I don't think he'll go up to Fiona and offer straight away. You have Klein and his doctor skills, which would be invaluable in the crater. So you have him perhaps tending to a faunus kid who got hurt, and out of the blue, Whitley decides to help. He can give his sort of Sundere reasoning if you'd like, but the point is, he starts to help a little bit, just doing what's in front of him and helping Klein. If you notice, he's actually pretty willing to help as a person. He asks a lot for direction, and he seems like the kind of person that if you actually did ask for his help, he'd do it. He does that with Ruby. He then even asks what is expected of him next, and that's where Weiss gives him the go to your room line, but he was actually asking. That was an offer. It might have been coded in some attitude and, you know, not the most open language, but it is what it is, and you can read into that. So you have him helping Klein and Fiona sees. As she's passing, she just asks him for help with something else. You might see him grumble or, oh, fine, but he does it. Then later, you can come back and he's really helping now running blankets and food around, helping with doctoring, etc. You can show growth pretty easily, and a lot of that will come from seeing gratification of people when he does it, people smiling at him, people glad to see him, a contrast to when they first saw him come in. Everything I've mentioned doesn't need to take up a whole episode. You have the Huntresses doing things on screen, and you see what Whitley doing these things in the background, or he's just leaving a tent after receiving a job as someone else comes in, and you hear two lines of dialogue. You can tie this in pretty easily, and make it a consistent element without it dominating the whole story. And back at the May thing I was mentioning, in fact, the same goes there. You only need to do it lightly. You just have her reacting to him. When Whitley is initially resistant, May can roll her eyes and sigh as if it's exactly what she expected. But over time, you can show her taking notice as Whitley is really starting to help. Again, you can do it with some subtle looks and changes in body language and her expression. It's showing to May that even these bad people can grow if given the right circumstances and a chance. She did that. Weiss did that, and now Whitley is doing that. You have provided Whitley with a mother figure in Willow, a father figure in Klein, a purpose with Fiona, and an audience to have a little commentator on proceedings with May. Towards the end of these sort of segments, I would actually have a moment where Whitley and May are doing something together to help. It's that acceptance. They don't have to be best friends, but it's that they both trust the other one is doing what they're doing for the right reason, and they trust that person. Whitley appreciates and respects Huntsman now, and May sees the growth in Whitley to better himself. In the background of all this, we also have improvement and changes in Willow. Becoming the mother Whitley needs, he is still a kid. But really, here's where I clutch this, because I think we can do a fantastic payoff to this little bit with the fall. We want to establish Whitley has grown and wants to help, he's become more selfless, and that he has the potential to be a smart and compassionate leader of the biggest business in Remnant. We need to know he's smart, and we need to show he has built trust with people. This is why I wish Volume 8 actually took place over a longer period of time. Even all the improvement I've mentioned feels rushed over like the day or day and a half Whitley would be down there, right? It's too quick. I recognize that weakness in this, but I have a mild solution, kind of. Let's just say he took some big strides to start. In fact, his actions so far, calling Klein so forth, might help people get over that hurdle because he's already taken a few little steps on screen. Now we need to fast forward to when the fall is about to happen and the Huntresses get the call. Evacuate the crater. Obviously, it's panic time, but this is where Whitley chimes in. You have him speak up, maybe he's beside his mother and she's asked to be, you know, let in on what's happening, whatever. He's around. He might even force his way into the tent to speak up against some protests from the people that haven't warmed up to him yet totally. You have him burst in and suggest a way out. He knows the layout down here. He's been studying to take over from his father's business. Perhaps he overheard something, or perhaps he simply looked at what the Schnees own, etc. But the point is, you give the Huntresses an escape route. He gives it to them. A certain mineshaft or a path that makes sense. And because he knows the business, they put faith in that. They trust that he knows what he's talking about. Then you have the fall, and we're back to the start with the people out on the ice. Not everyone made it, but if you really wanted to kill Willow or Klein, I guess you could still do it. I still wouldn't. But whatever you do with the survivors, perhaps, like I said, stick them on a command ship, you can have Whitley, of course, go with them. So Whitley facilitated the escape and survival of way more people than would have otherwise. He was essential in helping everyone. And like I said, you have him getting on the ship with everyone else to leave, to continue being among the people. 
working with the Huntresses, learning from his mother and Klein, learning their values, learning their skills, learning everything he needs to grow. That's why we keep Klein around. He has so many skills from being both a butler and someone with medical training. Who better to teach Whitley how to survive in the real world? For Klein to graduate from no longer looking after him by doing it for him, but teaching him to do it for himself so he can help others. Also, I'd like to add a side note that one of the people I think we should see in the crater and escape onto the ice and end up in the ship is May's brother. To have him there and perhaps even thank his sister when he gets onto the ship. Something like that. Like, just a small thing. And he's still clearly uncomfortable. He is Whitley before he grew up, right? Before he went through his experience, he's been sitting in the crater hating his life. But now we see Whitley's gone through that progression. Maybe this can happen here as well for the Marigolds. Also, it just means we tie up this one random character who showed up once, but, you know, it feels more complete. We know where he went kind of thing, you know? Question answered. But my overall point is this tells a story in the background. We only need to see these things in passing scenes so long as we hit a few key moments. Like him starting to help people, Willow showing him glyphs, and him helping people evacuate with his plan. Because if we hit these points, we can show him loading up with the survivors to fly off somewhere, you know, not under attack. Uh, Mistral would probably be best since, you know, their relic is already gone and the place is still standing, so yeah, probably there. But it can take him out of the story. We He flies off with the survivors, and it can take him out of our narrative for a long time. But we can then believe next time we see him that he's made so many more improvements. Even if it's in the epilogue, that he's this very changed person. We saw him start his journey and put him in a situation to continue it. So when we see him again and he's a smart, cunning, but friendly and welcoming businessman who cares about his workers, cares about the way of the world, including the huntsmen who need his dust that he sells, all of it. We sort of saw his journey without seeing his journey. We know he's smart enough to handle the business, compassionate enough to be the one in charge. And honestly, Honestly, if you wanted to be cheeky, you could also show him summon something, implying that he's overcome some enemies and grown physically as well. He's not a huntsman, but he did defeat a Grim, presumably in the protection of someone else along the way. If we had time, I'd actually put it somewhere in this story, that he kills a Grim in desperation that's about to attack someone. Like, out on the ice, the Huntresses are doing their best to defend people from a little Grim attack, and let's say May is about to get jumped from behind by a Sentinel, and Whitley grabs something, some kind of weapon, and jumps on its back and stabs it and manages to kill. It. Stupid, rash, and barely successful, but it shows a willingness to risk himself for others. The ideals of a huntsman, something he now admires. And you can do more growing with May, that he was willing to put himself on the line for her. You know, what growth, what amazing, you know, potential he has as a person. And then him summoning at the end would be a little lovely callback to that moment. Also a great reference to him mocking Weiss, learning to do the exact same thing. But now, he does it. But yeah, that's sort of about it. With this little plot, we could really make Whitley a character. Give Willow a future and a nice life. Keep Klein's face around. Learn a mature lesson with May, and all the while not really needing to detract from the big overall plot. It keeps characters we like involved. And you can do most of this in three or four scenes with them half in the background for most of it. And still convey this little character arc. I think it'd be really nice to round out some of our characters before we likely say goodbye to them for a very long time, perhaps even until the end. Make the most of the time we have with them in our story. But that is all I have for now. So until next time, remember that if Weiss, Winter, or Whitley ever have a daughter, then their other siblings would have technically gained a schnees. Anyway, my name is Rigger. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope I did alright. <laughs>